<laughs> it kind of was. Okay, I quit. I All can't right, work under these. Uh, you know, give up. <laughs> The massive high school towers over all the other buildings in this bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in the top students from every field imaginable, a government-funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. But they don't go to college after high school? Um, there are two things you need to attend the school. One, you have to have already been attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student could enroll here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students was me. Uh. <laughs> what? Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body felt heavy. It wouldn't be weird for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but what was I doing asleep here just now? It wasn't any classroom I'd been in before. What the heck is going on? Uh. Finally, I could finally feel my mind and body start to come back together again. And then, I was awake. Or was this just another dream? A dream inside a hopeless nightmare? No, this isn't a dream. I could tell because the stench invading my nostrils was too powerful for a dream. What an awful smell! I was in a vast, dark cavern with the barest hint of light seeping in. Trash was piled high all around the area. This must be some kind of underground garbage pit. A heck of a situation to find myself in, but that was just the beginning of my problems. Was I going to be stuck in here till I wasted away and died? No, I can't let that happen! Not after what my good friend went through to save me. I remembered all too well what had happened. Alter Ego saved me, and he used up the last little bit of his strength to do it. So I can't give up now, for myself and for my friend. And with that, my pursuit of survival began. First up was to start looking for a way out of here. Alright gang, how do we start looking for a way out of here? Was, Monokuma. Was, wasn't he tied to the chair? Correct. I also so want to point out... <laughs> Magic. How... how how did he know that it was uh, Alter Ego's like last bit of strength? That's true. Or even that it was him, since he was facing away from it. No, I think uh, I think uh, Alter Ego's screen was in front of him. Was it? Pretty sure. Shit. We'll leave that to the people who watch this later to remember. Look a key. Look a key. Where's a key? Well, there's a keyhole. Well, that's a hundred percent the opposite of a key. Rattle, rattle. It's locked. Any no matter how many times room? I pushed or pulled or kicked at it, it didn't budge. Getting out of here isn't going to be that easy. Well, if I'm not getting out of here anytime soon, I decided to look around for some food. Garbage food. There's plenty of food here, but it's all rotten. But that was pointless too. Next, I searched for some water. How can I be sure which liquids I can drink and which ones are an all-around bad idea? Again, pointless. I feel like I'm blocked in on all sides. But that's still not enough reason for me to give up. Because... Because I'm still alive! And as long as I'm alive, I'll never give up! After making that proud declaration, the next thing I decided to do was... Go to sleep. My sleep was deep and uninterrupted. That was my only way to preserve what little strength I had left. After not being able to eat or drink, I can't be sure, but I think at least a full day had to have passed, and all I did was sleep and sleep. It was like I was waiting for some kind of sign to come falling out of the sky. However, what fell from the sky wasn't a sign. Not exactly. Crunch! What the? The strange sound pierced my silent isolation, jarring me awake. As I watched, 
The pile of garbage jostled and formed an odd shape. Did something fall down over here? Wow. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, our detective powers have reached a new critical high. Oh, I like no. how, um, I, I like how, you know, he's filled with determination to lie down and sleep and wait for, like, <laughs> yeah. the big savior to come and save him because he's incapable <laughs> of doing anything himself. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I need to adjust my sound really quick because it is entirely too loud on my end. That hasn't changed the sound for you guys, right? Right. Nope, no. the same. Good. What could it have been? Huh. Should I investigate the garbage or something else? The garbage. Did a giant piece of trash just fall down here? I carefully stretched out my hand toward whatever it was that had tumbled down here with me. A giant piece of trash? Rude. Before she even emerged from the pile of garbage, I knew who it was. Cup <laughs> 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 of noodles. Wow. This place smells awful. Uh, Kyoko? You look like you're doing better than I expected. No, what are you doing down here? Isn't it obvious? I'm here to help you. I'm glad to hear that, Kyoko. Um, you've got a bit of garbage in your hair. She gave her head a quick, sharp shake to get rid of the trash, then faced me again. First, I have something for you. Go ahead and eat it. We can talk once you're finished. Ah, th thank you! I snatched the bread and water that she was holding out for me. Within seconds, it was in my mouth and making its way toward my stomach. <laughs> you were right, let's see. <laughs> Whew, that really hit the spot. Now I've got all the energy I need to keep going. So you still haven't given up, then? Of course not. After all, the fact that I can keep going forward is about all I'm good at. Well, that's not such a bad thing to be good at. I say we talk to the only person here who isn't garbage. Well. ah, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> no. kidding. I'm kidding. But, Kyoko, why'd you come to rescue me? To pay a debt. Or, no, to atone. Atone? During the trial, even though you knew I was lying, you didn't say anything. So, you knew that I knew... But even though I knew, I did nothing to help you. I abandoned you. Don't say that! You didn't abandon me. No, that's exactly what I did. I abandoned you in order to save my own life. You were trying to save me, and I couldn't bring myself to do the same for you. But listen, not that I'm trying to make excuses, but... There was a reason that I had to survive, no matter the cost. Reason? Why did you have to survive? I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. The reason I have to survive is so that I can do what I came to the school to do. What? I made up my mind to come to Hope's Peak Academy for one very important reason. An important reason? So you have some reason for coming to Hope's Peak? That's right. At least I did. Once. Once? Until recently, I'd forgotten what it was. You forgot, but that's... I had no memory of what my purpose was. No memory? That's impossible. Amnesia? Then, is it really true? You lost your memory? Do you remember, Makoto? Do you remember the first thing that happened to each of us as soon as we arrived at the school? The first thing? You're talking about when we fainted, right? I fainted, and when I woke up, I was trapped here. I fainted, too. And when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself. A disconnect. Thinking back at it now, at that point, my memory was gone. At that time, I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember what I'd come to this school, 
And I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all about that? Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. Are you saying you think you lost your memory because... I don't think. I'm positive it was the work of the Mastermind. They stole my memory. But, but why would they want to do that? There's only one reason I can come up with. Because of my purpose and my ability. Somehow they would interfere with the Mastermind's plan. So the Mastermind just stole them from you? And it could also mean... Somehow my memories may be connected to the mystery of the school and the Mastermind. Which is why I have to get them back. That's why I've been investigating things by myself this whole time. But if what you say is true, why didn't you ask the rest of us to help you? If I did that, and we all worked as one, the Mastermind would have noticed right away. Plus, there's always a chance that the Mastermind is actually one of us. What? Well, don't make too big a deal of it. It's just a possibility. But since it is a possibility, we can't ignore it, right? The Mastermind, one of us... If she believed that, then of course she wouldn't trust anyone around her. In which case, it only makes sense that she would look into her missing memory by herself. That being said, there was a limit to what I could do by myself, which is why I asked you to help me. But why me? Because among everyone, you were the least likely to be the mastermind. That's just intuition, but... Uh, I see. Your intuition was right, though. There's no way an ordinary kid like me could have been the mastermind. I understand. I should understand everything. My goal isn't to get out of here. It's to stay here. Uh, it's just like the dream I had before, but why did that just happen? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, it's nothing. It is nothing, right? Hmm. Even now, I still trust you, you know? It's just... I'm not used to relying on others. Well, I know I never asked you for help the right way, so I understand if you're not convinced. Honestly, I was convinced. I think that's just her personality. Uh, what are we supposed to click on if not her? We can click on the Monokuma. Monokuma. Kuma. That's a rocket and a tank? I better not think too much about what I'm seeing down here. This is a desk. <laughs> it's probably the one that fell down here with me. So observant. He is pretty good at this. He's been doing it for a that while. Over there is trash. <laughs> it's probably down here because it's a trash place. <laughs> oh <my God>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that an airplane? How did something like that wind up in the school's garbage pit? Let's check the door again. I'd better talk to Kyoko, even though I was just talking to her. You said you had a reason for doing all that investigating on your own, so how did that turn out? Were you able to remember anything? I think there's still a lot that I don't remember, but at the very least, I was finally able to recall my purpose and my ability. Oh shit. Oh. Bum, bum, bum. Your purpose. You mentioned your ability. My ability, what everyone should have known me for. I'm the ultimate detective. The ultimate detective? And the reason I came to Hope's Peak Academy. There was someone I had to find here in the school. Someone. You had to find someone? Who? Well. It was the headmaster of Host Peak Academy. The headmaster? Why did you want to find the headmaster? Because he's my father. What? Oh. I was separated from him as a child. As it turns out, he became the headmaster of Hope's Peak. Kyoko's dad is Hope's Peak's headmaster? And that explains when Ultra Ego told us how he thought the headmaster was involved... 
I'll find a way. Huh? No matter what it takes, I'll find the headmaster. No matter the cost. Kyoko, what's going on? My memory hadn't come back at that point, but when he said that, I felt strange. It makes perfect sense now, of course, since my whole purpose for coming here was to find him. That makes sense. But listen, Makoto, I want to make this perfectly clear so there's no misunderstanding. I said the headmaster wasn't the mastermind, but I didn't say that to protect him. I only said what I felt based on what I'd seen when I snuck into the headmaster's room. Then, what did you see in there? The room had been ransacked. The shelves were a mess. The desk drawers dumped on the floor. The only conclusion is that someone who didn't know where anything was had been there. You mean the mastermind, right? That was my assumption, yes. And to confirm my suspicion, I decided to investigate the second floor of the dorms using the key I'd found. But why there? Because I also found this in the headmaster's room. This is some kind of map? It's a layout of the entirety of Hope's Peak Academy. I found it in the headmaster's room, along with Mukuro's profile and that key. The map showed that the second floor was home to a number of rooms meant for faculty use. So some of the staff must have had to stay overnight from time to time. And I figured the headmaster would have some kind of private room there. I assumed that if, the, if that was true, that room would likely hold some more clues. So I went to check. And that's when I finally remembered. I remembered that my purpose was to find the owner of that room. So you went there to see if the headmaster really did have a private room there. But once I got there, I noticed that the second floor of the dorms didn't have any cameras or monitors. Second floor? So what was it like? That part of the school, I mean. It's hard to describe. All I can say is... The moment I saw it, I realized. Whatever's going on in this school is more horrific than we ever imagined. What do you mean? I can't explain it. You need to see it for yourself. And I'm sure you'll get your chance soon enough. It sounds like it must have been important and really ominous. Of course, once I got to the second floor of the dorms, there were no cameras and no monitors. Which is why I had no idea what was going on in the rest of the building. What was going on? It had to do with Mukaro Ikosaba, didn't it? Just to be perfectly clear, I didn't kill her. And I know it wasn't you either. I know you're right, but that just means everyone but you and me had an alibi, so then who did kill her? What I can say for sure is that the mastermind is directly involved. To begin with, the point of the class trial of Mukuro Ikosaba was to get me killed. Get you killed? I stole that key and disappeared, and in retaliation they wanted to draw me out and eliminate me. That was the point of the class trial. It was? The mastermind knew they couldn't interfere directly. You mean because of the school's regulations? Exactly. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope's Peak Academy at your discretion. The mastermind is adamant about following the rules, and with that rule in place, they couldn't step in. Since they couldn't kill me themselves, they tried to use the class trial to do it. The mastermind couldn't step in because of the rules? That makes it sound like... The mastermind themselves is somehow bound by the school regulations. There's one other thing I'd like to point out about the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. What's that? There was a point where Mukuro may not have become the victim. It could have been you, Makoto. I could have become the victim? You know what I'm talking about, right? 
Do you mean during the night? I can hear them, you know. The footsteps of the god of death. What? I can hear the god of death as he moves. That ability naturally draws me to cases, just like this. Which is exactly what happened with you. I was in the dorms, and I had a sudden sense of dread. I looked down the stairwell, and I saw a white shadow across the corridor. It gave chase right away. As I followed it, I saw the shadow go into your room. I ran into your room, and I saw what was happening. I intervened immediately, of course. That wasn't the end of things, of course. I stopped them, but that led to... Whoever the master assailant was, they ended up dead. And the murder was disguised, and the dojo key wound up in my room. It all has to be the work of the mastermind, and I sent to use the class trial to eliminate me. The work of the mastermind? So all this would mean that whoever killed Bukaro is also the mastermind, right? I don't have conclusive evidence, but that's what I think. But that's really bad if true. It means the mastermind can kill whoever they want, if they feel like it. Wait, but doesn't that create another contradiction? The mastermind wanted us to use a class trial to kill you, because they couldn't intervene, right? You're right. That is a contradiction. And it's not just Mukuro. They needed a class trial to kill me, but seem ready to kill you in your room. Everything they did is a contradiction. So, what does it all mean? It means that the mastermind is the one who has been cornered. Huh? Just a little more. A little more and I should be able to figure out the mastermind's identity. The identity of the other ultimate despair. The other ultimate despair? There's no doubt that Mokuru was the ultimate despair and that she's dead. But I don't think the ultimate despair is just one person. It's not? If you think about it, the ultimate despair seems to implicate whoever caused that event. You're talking about... What happened a year ago. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. The tragedy? Whoever's responsible for that, they're the ultimate despair? That despicable group whose only purpose and motivation comes from despair. Then they're... Make no mistake. They're the root of all evil that has forced us to go through this. Can we just say that her hair looks like fettuccine and it makes me hungry? Um, yeah, we can say that. That is the ultimate despair. And that is our real enemy. <laughs> to be continued, like, right in the beginning of her recording. <laughs> the ultimate them. despair. A group of people who caused the tragedy one year ago. Those same people put together this killing game and began broadcasting it around the world. The most desperately awful group of people ever. That is the Mastermind's true identity. Our enemy has finally been revealed. But right now... Right now we have to get out of this horrible place. Figuring out the rest of the story can come after. Yeah, you're right. Well, oh, okay, that's it. <laughs> that's all the guidance we're going to get. Let's keep trying this door. I feel like eventually it'll just open, you know? Okay. If only someone had a key that could open every room <laughs> in the entire school. Holy shit. You're a genius, Mouse. I am. That's true. Kyoko, do you still have that one thing? Monokuma's secret tool that you got from the headmaster's room? Of course I do. It's an absolutely vital part of ensnaring the mastermind. I would never part with it. And it can open any door in the school, right? That's right. Then we should be able to use it on that door, right? 
Hey, Kyoko, we can use that key of yours to open this door, right? Let's find out. Kyoko took out the key with Monokuma design on it and slid it into the keyhole. And then... Yes, it opened! And now we can get out of here. Let's go. Sounds good. We quickly opened the door and made our escape from the garbage pit. <laughs> finally. We were finally free. But there wasn't even time to take a breath of relief. Because the real fight had just begun. After leaving the garbage pit, we found ourselves in a tunnel extending straight up like a chimney. There was a metal ladder leading up into that tunnel. We started climbing the ladder intent on reaching the surface. Wow, good job. You can see up her butt. Yeah, that's how Japan be. Ew. I mean, like, at, least, at least he went first, right? I mean, there's there's <laughs> shadows. There's some or modesty here. Arm. She's or wearing spanks. Barely. There's <laughs> barely modesty. I unexpected him to go full Mario. I don't know if you guys have seen that clip where Peach goes first and then Mario second. It's pretty glorious. The ladder was impossibly long. I couldn't even see where it ended. We climbed into the darkness. The passage was so dark and cramped, I couldn't even see my own feet beneath me. I had no idea we were so far down. Don't lose your footing. If you slip, I won't be able to catch you. Y yeah, I'll be careful. But now that you said that, I'm getting kind of nervous. Yeah, where'd it go? Don't look down. Maybe talking will help keep my mind off of it. Um, so Kyoko, there's something I wanted to ask you. You said you're the ultimate detective, right? So how long have you been doing detective work? How long? Ever since I can remember. I come from a long line of detectives. Detective work is in my blood. There was a time when being a detective was considered a sacred duty. My family's always seen it that way. Then, is your family famous? Quite the opposite, actually. Even among actual detectives, many people haven't heard of us. Huh? But how come? It's like your family tradition, right? So... Because we take pride in it. Pride? A detective is neither light nor shadow. We represent neither justice nor evil. It is how we can uncover the absolute truth. We stand neutral in all things. And to do that, we have to stand separate from the rest of society. Which is why we've made a conscious effort to conceal our existence. A conscious effort? It is kind of old fashioned and I can't say it's entirely rational. But it's our family creed, and we do what we must to protect it. Because, like I said, it's our source of pride. Pride. So that explains... Before I came here, when I was looking up info about the school online, I never saw anything about her. Because she hid herself on purpose to protect the pride of her family. And yet... I gave up some of that pride. Huh? In order to enter Hope's Peak, I had to reveal myself to the school. I did it knowing it was something a true Kirigiri detective would never do. But the reason you gave up that pride, the reason you would go so far to enter Hope's Peak, it was because of how much you wanted to reconnect with your dad, right? There's no shame in that. Reconnect? I had absolutely no desire to reconnect with my father. Um, huh? But, but you'd be reuniting after all those years, right? You would have had so much to talk about. There's nothing I want to talk to my father about. There's something I wanted to say to him, though. What? No matter what it takes, I have to find him and tell him, face to face. What is it? I want to sever all ties with him. Sever? The last time I saw him, I was still very young. So I don't remember myself, but apparently he was extremely intelligent. He was in line to become the next head of the Kirigiri family. 
He was talented. He had a promising future. But he had no interest in detective work. So he cut himself off from the family. Not long after that, my mother died, and he simply ran away. He went to my grandfather, and they had a huge argument. And young as I was, he left me behind. I'm sure there was a reason for that. I'm sure your dad wanted to take you with him. If that's true, then I need to thank him. Thank him for leaving me. Because unlike him, I take pride in the work I do. I take pride in my family name. So every last part of me is happy he didn't take me with him. If I'd gone with him, I never would have had the chance to become a detective. I was above Kyoko on the ladder, so I wasn't able to see her expression. So I couldn't tell. I couldn't see how she looked when she said that, what she might have been feeling. All I could tell was that compared to her usual self, she was more talkative. And more emotional. I don't blame him, you know. He had his own life to live. That's what everyone in my position might say, right? But it's not true. But there's one thing. One thing that I can never forgive. Really? The way everyone else looked at me. I was never, I was never sad about being left behind. Like I said, I think it was a good thing. But when the rest of my family looked at me, they saw something different. They only saw me as the little girl that was abandoned by her father. That's how they see me even to this day. His shadow has been following me my entire life. I'm sick of it. I need him out of my life. I need to step out of his shadow. That's why I have to find him and tell him we're no longer family. In order to settle the past. In order to remove him from my life forever. I have no doubt he forgot about me years ago. But, but your family? To just cut him out like that? Our only connection is through blood, nothing more. Are we connected by heart and soul? No. Is blood really enough to call someone family? Only connected by blood, not by heart or soul. I was so shocked to hear her say something like that, I didn't know how to respond. So, instead, I said nothing. I just kept climbing the ladder in complete silence. And after I don't know how long, we finally reached the top. Looks like this is it. On the other side of this door, Host Peak is waiting for us. We're back. Remember that hatch on the ground near the trash room? I'm fairly certain that's where we'll come out. I unlocked it earlier so it would be open without much trouble. That's lucky. You would want to climb all the way up here only to be like, ah, it's locked. Damn. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> well, here goes nothing. I reached my hand up and pushed against the hatch. The hatch opened with ease, and so... Looks like we're back. But I can't believe how long that ladder was. I'm exhausted. I can't exactly say we're safe and sound, but at least we're out of there. Now we're back in Hope's Peak Academy. Kyoko, thank you. I never would have gotten out of there without you. No thanks necessary. I was just returning the favor. Let's look at this. This is how we got out of the garbage pit. I never would have imagined that's where this led. Wow. So, now what do we do? I'm glad I didn't die, of course, but in th if the Mastermind finds out... And I'm worried about you, too. You help me so they might... You're worried? Yeah, of course. Then let's just get that concrete answer. Huh? Let's ask Monokuma if there's a problem with you escaping. Wait, that's... If we try to hide, it's only a matter of time till we're found out. And it's not like we can run anyway. 
As she said that, she pointed at the nearby surveillance camera. So you're saying that rather than stressing out over getting caught, we should just give up now? Don't worry. What you think is going to happen isn't. Because the mastermind is the one that's ensnared. The mastermind is ensnared? You said something like that before, but what does it mean? The mastermind stood exposed during the investigation into Mukuro's death. There was a moment where the mastermind let their guard down. There was? If we can talk to Monokuma, we can confirm it. And it'll be better for us if we go to him directly before he tracks us down. That should help with our negotiations. Hmm. I'm still a little... No, I'm super uneasy about this. But we don't really have a choice, do we? Monokuma should be in the gym. Let's get going. Hey, 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 hey. Giago, I don't mind so much. But Makoto's supposed to be dead. What's he doing here? That's exactly how I thought he'd react. Are we really going to be okay? You were supposed to be punished. Did Kyoko help you? So what if I did? What will you do? If the guilty party is exposed during a class trial, they alone will be executed. It's unfortunate, but that is the rule. So now I gotta punish you again! And this time I won't leave anything to chance. K Kyoko! Do whatever you feel you have to. What? But before you do, let me just say one thing. If you execute Makoto, that means you lose. Not that that matters to you, right? Huh? I lose? You! Explain yourself! What do you mean by that? Well, you set up this latest class trial yourself, right? I was getting in your way, so you wanted an excuse to kill me. I was supposed to be chosen as the blackened and then executed, right? Hey, what are you talking about? But when Makoto chose to overlook my lie, your plan came crashing down. The result of the trial weren't at all what you were expecting. Because you never imagined that in a position, one person would protect another like that. And in response to that unexpected development, you reacted by proclaiming Makoto the Blackened and trying to execute him. You made the choice out of desperation. No, more than that. You must have realized that Makoto, who refused to be manipulated, was a threat to you as well. Mm. But then there was another unexpected development waiting for you. An entity that would have thrown a wrench, so to speak, in your precious execution machinery. Alter Ego. You never imagined the possibility of a being that could come to our aid even after you killed it. Now, here's the absolute truth. Makoto didn't kill Mukro. You did. So executing Makoto for it would surely be a violation of your rules, which I know you love so much. If the Blackened is exposed, they alone will be executed. That's what you told us, right? Hmm. Huh. That means I lose. You talk a big game. You're saying the Blackened is me and not Makoto. And you can prove this, right? No, I can't. Don't just say it like that. What is this? A comedy routine? To make such bold claims without a shred of evidence. I don't have any right now, but with a little more time, I guarantee I'll find some. Because no matter how deeply you try to bury it, there is only ever one absolute truth. And now you're just trying to talk like some kind of famous detective type. If Makoto really was the killer, 
He never would have come to you willingly like this. He would have feared for his life, feared another execution. He would have tried to run and hide. He would have been gripped by the despair you so love to inspire. But here we are, confronting you with nothing but hope in our hearts. And that's supposed to be enough to convince me in the absence of evidence. It's not you I'm trying to convince. If you were to execute Makoto now, everyone out there watching this would be extremely displeased. Huh? Imagine what everyone out there would think if you killed Makoto. They would assume that you killed him because of what we said is exactly right. Despair can never kill hope. <laughs> of course, you can say we're just making this all up. You're welcome to prove us wrong. No, you have no choice but to prove it. Because if you kill Makoto without proving your own innocence, you'll be accepting your own defeat. <laughs> if you want to earn our despair, fair and square, then I suggest you take my advice. So, what is this advice of yours? To do Mokuro's trial over again. Only this time you follow the school's regulations to ensure a fair trial. It's time for one last showdown. One final battle between hope and despair. Well... That would make for a proper climax, wouldn't you say? A fair trial, one last showdown. In other words, this would be our chance to expose the true identity of Mukuro's killer, of the Mastermind themselves. But what reason would the Mastermind have to accept the challenge? They'll probably just execute me without another word. <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Barry? <laughs> I was getting bored, so I decided to change things up a little. So time for bear jokes. Now what you've suggested might be possible. It would certainly make for one honey of a climax. Does that mean you accept? If we do things your way, that'll be enough to convince you and the viewers, right? And it would cause you unbearable despair, right? Then I'm prepared to agree with two your terms. Oh my god. <laughs> Very nice. Will your hope win out? Or will despair claim victory? Let's have one final grisly showdown. He agreed. Then we still have a shot at this. But this is the long-awaited climax, right? Just guessing the killer is barely a fitting end. So for this final face-off, you'll have to unearth all the mysteries that have been buried here. <laughs> all the mysteries? That's right. Every last mystery that's pawning around the school. If you can do that, then that will be enough to qualify as a victory for you. That's what we've been trying to do all along. Okay, well, good. Then let's bear it all. If you can claw your way to the truth of Mukuru's death and solve the mysteries of the school, then you win. But if you can't, do all of that. We all face execution, right? <laughs> I can barely contain my excitement. When you learn the whole truth, what kind of despair will you show me? We're as excited as you are, I'm sure. When we've uncovered every last truth, how will the ultimate despair reveal their own despair? I honestly can't believe how this has all turned out. 
But before we get started, I want to clarify one more thing. Do you remember the rule? When one student kills another, that's when a class trial is held. I remember that for sure. So what? I just want to confirm that is what you said, right? And it's a true statement. <laughs> you don't have to be so suspicious. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. Everything is based on school regulations. And having a trial for Mukuro is no exception to that. Huh? Mukuro's trial is no exception, then it's part of the regulations? Which would have to mean that whoever killed Mukuro... <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach. I know, but... Okay, enough puns. Anyway, here's a hint. I'm sure I've told you this already, but... This killing game began with 16 participants, all of them high school students. And the only people to take a single step in Hope's Peak since the killing game began are those 16 students. What? Are you telling the truth? Why did it go quiet all of a sudden? <laughs> I'm done talking. You got nothing left to say to you. So get lost, would ya? Why so mad? He seems emotionally unstable. Leave me alone. Get out of here. Uh, okay, I'm going. I just... You're really gonna let me go? Huh. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> You're all gonna get your punishment later anyway. I need to start getting red ready. A super duper extra special punishment overflowing with despair. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Come on, Makoto. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Silence. Monokuma's unstable laughter seemed to cling to us as we walked away. And just like that, we were out of the gym. Hmm. I could hardly believe it, but somehow I ended up not getting executed. I still had my life, and we still had a chance. Overall, things had turned out way better than expected. Once again, I was in Kyoko's debt. Kyoko, thank you. Everything I have right now is because of you. Don't thank me just yet. The real battle is still ahead of us. Yeah, true. But still, I'm glad it worked out. I wasn't sure if the enemy would accept my proposal. Uh, but honestly, why would the Mastermind agree to that? I mean, they don't stand to, to gain anything from a final showdown, do they? They had no choice but to accept. What? It's all because of that one moment that the Mastermind let down their guard, like I said. So, when was it that the Mastermind let their guard down? I wasn't there to hear it myself, but do you remember what the Mastermind said? They said that they had hijacked the airwaves to broadcast our school life to the outside world, right? Y yeah, they definitely said that. And what did you think when you heard of that? Pretty hard to believe, right? Well, I mean, the idea of actually taking over the airwaves seems so unbelievable. You don't exactly read about something like that happening very often, so it's hard to imagine. In other words, that kind of thing is extremely difficult to pull off. And yet, somehow, the Mastermind was able to do it. But think of it another way. There must have been some reason they had to do something that difficult. A reason. They had to show the world something, no matter the cost, us killing each other. They wanted to show the world? The Mastermind has been very adamant about not killing us directly, 
but forcing us to kill each other. And all their rules and regulations were designed to encourage that. Yeah, that makes sense. If those stupid regulations didn't exist, nobody would have killed anybody. So the Mastermind's ultimate goal was to make us kill each other and show that off to the world. But why? To prove a point, most likely. Prove a point? The outside world has a name for the students of Hope's Peak, right? A certain concept. You're talking about hope, right? And for those of us who represent hope to kill each other and sink into despair. The mastermind wants the world to see that, to try and prove that despair is better than hope. That's their goal, as the ultimate despair. What? They want to prove that despair is better than hope? But that, that's ridiculous. You're right. It is ridiculous. Completely irrational. It's the kind of thing that nobody but those who call themselves the ultimate despair would devise. That group whose only purpose and motivation comes from despair. But, but is that really their only reason for making the rest of us suffer? I know how angry it must make you. And yet... That same motivation is what led the mastermind to revealing their weakness. What? Because their goal is to broadcast this killing game to the world. The mastermind has had to be more particular than is reasonable about their own regulations. If the mastermind simply ignored their rules, this wouldn't have been a game, but a one-sided slaughter. At least... That's how those who were watching this would have seen it. And that's why the mastermind couldn't kill any of us themselves. That is precisely the reason. No matter how much they may hate what I'm doing, I haven't violated a single one of their regulations. I was about to say. Junko broke the rules, so she was punished. But in my case, they couldn't lay a finger on me. So instead, they tried to use the class trial, following all their proper rules, to get me killed. They began a trial that didn't have the right answer, and then made me out to be the killer. But even that didn't work. Yes, thanks to you. And due to that failure, the mastermind took yet another risk. They attempted to kill you instead, who also was not the killer. And when that fact was exposed on live TV to the entire outside world, then the Mastermind had to accept your suggestion. To prove to the world that despair is better than hope, they have to defeat us in perfect form. It would only do the Mastermind harm to have it shown that they're violating their own regulations. But all of that was a hunch, right? And you were still able to get the Mastermind to accept your challenge. Well... It's only thanks to you that we got that chance. Because you believed in me. Another path opened up. Still, I can't believe how much of the Mastermind's thoughts and plans you were able to figure out. I didn't have the slightest clue. In the end, though, it couldn't prove any of it. It was just my reasoning. Essentially, I was making a bet. But it looks like I got it right. This time, at least, I won the bet. She let out a quick sigh. I took it as a small sign of relief. To be honest, I haven't been that nervous in a long time. I totally couldn't tell you were nervous at all. You seemed totally confident from the moment we decided to go talk to him. Well, presenting a strong demeanor is a fundamental part of negotiating and persuasion, wouldn't you say? Plus, if I'd showed my uneasiness, that would have just made you that much more uneasy. Yeah, you're probably right. How pathetic. Anyway, we can't relax just yet. All we've done is earned another chance to fight. We have to win this time. Or everything we've gone through will have been for nothing. You're right. If we can't defeat the Mastermind, it'll cost us our lives. There's no option except to win. 
But before we begin the final battle, we have to tell the others what's going on. True, but now we know who our real enemy is. All we have to do now is work together with everyone to destroy the mastermind. Work together with everyone. Is that really possible? Huh? What? Anyway, right now we have to go find the others. They are probably in the dorm somewhere. Shall we go? Imagine if there was something in the laundry room this one time. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold up, real quick. One last time. We should do it. Every dryer. Every, Every dryer. dryer. Oh, they're not in here, actually. Every dryer. I miss all my dead characters. I thought Celeste was my favorite. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like anybody's in here. Maybe they're in the dryers. Fuck. Can you imagine their heads are all just, like, stacked in there? I, I miss all my dead Oh, Oh, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> Rippo. <laughs> Until I came here, my mom took care of all my laundry and cleaning stuff. I bet she did. Maybe I'll try doing it myself when I get out of here and get home. I didn't know that there was going to be different dialogue for it. Wait, so who's been doing his laundry all this time? Uh, the school. It's magic. It's, yeah, it's magic. Wait, Joseph. What if they're little yeah. rule breakers? Maybe in the bath. Oh, the shit. Bath. You're right. That's exactly where they're going to be. In the bath? Yeah, because there's no cameras in there. Oh. And suddenly, we were greeted with... Monokuma. <laughs> you again? <laughs> Is he broken? I suppose his emotional instability reached its limit. <laughs> Jeez, what the heck? Sorry, give me a sec. <laughs> Excellent, excellent job, Mouse. I wasn't even sure what you were gonna do there, but you, you handled it perfectly. <laughs> Vocal key smash. <laughs> <laughs> it always also pretty. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, you, Come you on, Jerry, do you need a napkin? <laughs> you guys did not see the facial expressions. Like, it, it works out. From Kitty's response, I assume it was really funny. <laughs> this is devastating. What are you devastated by, Lindsay? That we didn't get to see the facial expressions. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> I wonder what that was all about. I couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief. It, is that Makoto? It, you guys. It is. There's no two ways about it. That's Makoto. Huh? You s survived? Jeez. You're like a stubborn little cockroach. You know that? I'm just asking to make sure, but you're not a ghost, right? Everyone was there. All my friends who had struggled together and survived. As soon as I saw their faces, I couldn't help myself. Burst I started to tear up. Wait, what's that smell? Yeah, man, that seriously stinks. It's Makoto. He smells like a wet dog. Get, get away! Shoo! Shoo! Uh, and in a flash, my tears dried up. Can I just say, Toka looked really happy to see you. Yeah, she did. I'm surprised. Makoto, what was it like hanging out in the spirit world? I didn't go to the spirit world. Did you get to talk to her? Uh, who? Miss Cleo. No, I didn't talk to her. I mean, I, I didn't go to the spirit world. I mean, who the heck is Miss Cleo? Yes, good reference. I still can't believe you survived. Yeah, me either. Do you realize why it is you escaped execution? It was... Alter Ego, he's saved my life. Not too many people can say they had their lives saved by a computer program. I imagine it was a learning experience for you. Rude. So, what have you guys been doing while I was gone? Well, we figured out that since the trial was over, we'd have access to new places again. And? No dice. 
all the rooms that were locked before were still locked. So there weren't any new areas. Then where can we go to find new clues? The second floor dorm. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, you stink. Are you rotten? Rotten physically, mentally, every way you can be rotten. Sorry, I was rolling around in garbage for a while. <laughs> this smell is so smelly. Oh, super smelly. You smell even worse than me. Way worse than me. I win. She seems happy for some reason. There's no time to indulge in an extended happy reunion. We need to explain to everyone what happened with Monokuma. Explain? Explain what? But is it okay that you're here? What if the mastermind catches you? That's related to what I have to tell you all. I need to tell you all about the last class trial. Last class trial? We're going to redo Mokuro's trial. What? Seriously? What's the point of redoing it? Makoto killed her, right? No, I didn't do it. I keep telling you. Makoto isn't the killer. And of course it's not me or any of you. Th then who is it? What she's saying is, it was all the work of the mastermind. What? You're saying the mastermind killed Makuru? That's right. It was on an elaborate trap contrived by the mastermind. Nope. Makoto spotted the trap in time and did what he had to to stop it. But his decision meant that he would be the one to die. You spotted the trap, did you, Makoto? You made it sound like it was easy. I just, you know. But executing Makoto, who wasn't the blackened, is a clear violation of the school regulations. The rules state that only the Blacken is to be executed. The Mastermind broke their own rules. Which is why I went and negotiated with them to have the trial one more time. The Mastermind agreed? Does that mean they really did break the rules? They had no choice but to agree. You used the TV broadcast to gain the leverage you needed, didn't you? Very observant of you. I recall what you said at the end of the last trial. When you said, now it's the masterminds that's ensnared. That's what you were referring to. Hey, I'm totally in the dark here. For anyone who doesn't understand, you can ask Kyoko to explain it again later. So knowing all this, what do we do now? It's about who killed Makuro, right? So our job is to expose the mastermind. Well, there's more to it than that, correct? Um, yeah. For us to win this time, we have to solve every last mystery surrounding the school. Every last mystery? But we've been looking around all this time and we still don't know anything, right? You probably guessed already, but if we lose this time, everyone dies. Everyone? Hey, hey, who said you could agree to those terms without talking to the rest of us? I'm fine with things the way they are! Fine living here forever with my master! I, meanwhile, want to get out of here as soon as humanly possible. Anyway, at this point, the only way for us to survive is to unravel the truth. In other words, one decisive final battle. A rather interesting development, I'd say. But figuring out who the mastermind is, and how they killed Mukuro, and all the school's mysteries... It's a pretty tall friggin' order. Maybe, but this time the trial is different. We know who our enemy is now. So if we work together and search as hard as we can, I'm sure we'll solve all of those mysteries. 
I'm not so sure about that. Oh, fuck it. Why do you be a buzzkill? <laughs> yeah, huh? I can't agree with the idea of working together with everyone. You can't agree? Why not? I mean, working together with everyone seems like the most obvious way to solve all the mysteries. That's what I thought, too. At first. Also, Monokuma gave us that little hint of his. Hint? <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach. I know. But okay. Enough puns. Anyway, here's a hint. I'm sure I've told you this already, but... This killing game began with 16 participants, all of them high school students. And the only people to take a single step in Hope's Peak Academy since the killing game began are those 16 students. Monokuma said that, did he? Then Kyogo's opinion is perfectly reasonable. Huh? But why? If the mastermind really is the one who killed Mukuru, as Kyoko says, then the mastermind would have had to set foot in, the, in this high school, right? Monokuma could probably murder Mukuru, but there is no way he could have disguised the scene like that. But according to Monokuma, the only people who have set foot in Hope's Peak are the 16 students who have been taking part in the killing game. Then the mastermind is... There were 15 of us in the main hall at the very beginning. Add in Mukuro and you get 16. So the mastermind w would have to be one of them. And of those 16 people we started out with, the only ones still alive are the people standing right here. Need I continue or do you get it now? You're saying the mastermind is one of us? You can't be serious. Well, wait, we can't say that's for sure yet. Monokuma might have just said all that to confuse us. It's certainly a possibility, but only one among many. The mastermind being one of us is also a possibility. And that is one possibility we can't ignore. Yeah, I mean, they're an ult ultimate, right? The ultimate despair. So they mu must be a high schooler. You can't say it's not possible. But if one of us was the mastermind, they'd have to be controlling Monokuma somehow, right? But did you ever see anyone acting suspicious anytime Monokuma was active? Maybe they snuck off and controlled him in, in secret. I don't care how sneaky you are, we would have noticed someone sneaking off that many times. Then maybe Monokuma was on autopilot. Maybe they loaded up all the dialogue and actions beforehand. In that case, there's no way he could have had all those back and forth conversations with us. Well, it wouldn't be entirely impossible if they directed the flow of the conversation. W well, maybe, but still. <laughs> ah, this is a school announcement. You've all probably figured this out by now, but... At this point, the killing game has now entered true ending mode. So in the name of fairness, I will unlock every room in the school. Look wherever you want. Solve the mystery in whatever way you see fit. <laughs> then we can all meet up at the class trial, okay? <laughs> How very magnanimous of him to unlock all the rooms. 
The time for talk is done. Now we need to begin our investigation. But... But... I was planning on working alone from the beginning anyway. At this point, I, ca I can rely only on myself. And the Togami blood flowing through my veins. I have no time to worry about the rest of you. Each of you must uphold your responsibility. Well then. After making his final statement, Bianchio left the dining hall. G Master! He didn't take me with him. Do you blame him? Without Master, the rest of you are like coffee with cream without the cream or coffee you're totally useless so bye <laughs> good <laughs> with that toko trudged out of the dining hall and now she's gone and you're gonna go off by yourself right kyoko that's right which just leaves Makoto, Hina, and me. In that case, I'm going to go by myself, too. Wait, how come? Just wait and see. I'm going to use my totally awesome spirit power to figure out the mastermind's identity. Totally awesome. <laughs> what the fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing loudly, Hiro left the dining hall. Everyone's really going to go off by themselves? What about you, Hina? Um, I guess I'll do the same thing. I mean, it's not that I don't trust everyone, you know. But up till now, I haven't really been all that useful. I just depend on Sakura and everyone else. You're not useless. If you hadn't been here, I would have died. M Makoto? That's really nice of you to say. But still, I know I've mostly been totally useless. So I figure at least here at the end, maybe I can find something that'll help us get out of here. So I'm going to go off and do it all on my own. Okay, see you later. Hina was in surprisingly high spirits as she dashed out of the dining hall. And once again, it's just us two. Indeed. So, you're going to go off on your own too, right, Kyoko? Well, don't misunderstand. Just because we're going to do our searches separately doesn't mean we can't still work together. That goes for all of us. I think I see what you mean. Doing our own investigating doesn't mean we can't work together in the end. I should just see it as a splitting up to cover more ground. And then we can get back together and share what we found. Yeah, that's right! Well, I better get going. I have an endless list of things I need to check. Monokuma said all the doors in the school had been unlocked, right? So we should be able to investigate every nook and cranny of the school. We can visit all the places we couldn't go before. Makoto, no matter what it takes, we have to uncover the truth. By any means necessary. With that, Kyoko was gone. Leaving only me. I don't have any time to waste either. I have to begin my search. I still can't believe the Mastermind might be one of us. So that's what I have to prove. I'll prove that the Mastermind isn't one of us. I'll expose the Mastermind's true identity and solve the mystery of this school. And then we can all escape together. 